What's up everybody, Thrills Miller here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jamie John. And we have yet another album review for you. So another one that came out on the, well, technically the 24th of April, because this label likes to put things out on uh, like Monday, I guess, was the newest offering from Valgrind, Millennium of Night Bliss. Again, this comes out on the 24th of April rather than the 28th. On Memento Mori Records, this band formed in Italy in 1996. This is their fifth album overall. And this is, I guess you could just say, like, old-school death metal. Uh, I've been familiar with them for a number of years. I was actually a big fan of their album Blackest Horizon. I really dig that one. Lots of, like, old-school death riffs and just, well, a lot of Florida worship. Like, there's definitely a lot of Florida worship in this. And this album in particular, I would say they went through all their Morbid Angel albums and kind of honed in on that sound in particular. And... Yeah, no, this is a very Morbid Angel-y album, and, mm -hmm. well, I mean, obviously, we like Morbid Angel, so obviously. we were interested. Uh, I wish I had more to say than that right off the rip, but, <laughs> I mean, you just get right into it with the song To Shub, or To Shub, or uh, words. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, A Demon with Indigestion talks for a second, and then nasty, snarly, Morbid Angel riffs. Yeah, sets up the atmosphere, uh, the guitar tone, very thick. Lots of just big, chunky riffs, you know, pummeling drums, and vocals that, I mean, honestly, kind of remind me of, like, Vader a little bit more than, uh, you know, Morbid Angel, but it's like Vader, except, like, you know, Peter's got a cold, so, I don't know, it's extra raspy and throaty. And a little bit of Chris Monroy from Skeletal Remains. Yeah, honestly, a little bit of that, too. Uh, Skeletal Remains is actually a pretty good comparison, but they also love Morbid Angel as well, so, I mean... Yeah, uh, this is definitely for Morbid Angel fans. The riffs on here, tight, chunky. The lead work on here, again, very Morbid Angel. In fact, uh, who's ever doing the leads is A, doing a lot of them, and B, has to love Trey, because these are very Trey-ish leads. Not only are they kind of like crazy and like just shreddy and all over the fucking fretboard and occasionally just like distant and strange, but they're also like tuneful and well composed at the mm -hmm. same time. All these things are trademarks of Trey. It just has that vibe and it carries out throughout the entire album because man, like sometimes you get like multiple lead sections mm -hmm. per song. Like this dude is just kind of going nuts. Uh, like on the last track, The Path to the Temple of Black Ash has two, three, maybe even four lead sections. Dude, dive bombs, shredding, yeah, going absolutely nuts, but they're delivering riffs at the same time. Like, underneath it, you still get some, like, sick riffs. Lots of groove here. Like, in terms of, like, Morbid Angel comparisons, because we're going to be bringing up that band a lot here, it's not as blasty as Morbid <laughs> Angel. Like, it, it doesn't quite have, like, the Sandoval drum style because there's a lot of other Florida bands I think this band kind of sounds close to. The title track opens up in well, a kind of familiar territory if you're a Morbid Angel fan, like us. It kind of sounds like Dominate. You have those stomping cymbal grabs and it goes into a blast beat. It's not, like, exactly spot on, but it is a definite morbid moment on here. But how the song moves around, it kind of, like, navigates its way through... I would assume Tampa a little bit because you have spots that have like a little bit more of that thrashy old school sound like early death or uh, even like some you know monstrosity or deicide in there like there's some interesting moments there's even like some little like proggy kind of flourishes on there in terms of the guitars it actually kind of sounds like uh, one of the more technical sections on like pull the plug honestly but it's that section that's actually the hook they revisited it a couple times got a very odd time signature to it in fact this band loves odd time signatures like in the song oracle of death that one has a really gigantic riff pattern that is done in a very odd time signature yeah and this was one of the ones i would say that kind of ventured like outside of the, well, wetlands and Florida a little bit. I know they're from Italy, but I, I feel like they've been to Florida or they really want to go to Florida. They're, they're on the wetlands of Italy. <laughs> yeah. I'm, and maybe Italy has those. I don't know. But uh, there are some like kind of more trad metal, like heavy metal riffs in there. Like it's not as dark and sinister in spots. In fact, like I think the main verse riff just kind of has this like death metal band playing Judas Priest riffs sort of feel to it. And it was kind of cool to hear a little bit more variety in some of their sound, like, you know, the song Dark Winds of Avalon. 
There's some like old school at the gates riff, so it's like early mellow death. It's noticeably different. Like it has a different sound overall. It's just, you know, again, more like triumphant. I want to say it ascends rather than descends, which a lot of these tremolo riffs on here are just deep, dark, dark, and, sinister, ugh. evil. Yep, straight down to the ground. Except in the song Lament of Black Penitence, Glory of the Son of the Dead. That's S U N. Yep, S U N, not Son of the Dead, but Sun, Sunshine. Yeah, because I always think about yep. that when it comes on to the dead. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Sunshine, dead. This song to me actually is the only one of its kind in this record where this is like more thrashy and faster and, and just a little bit more open and playful. A lot of this kind of lays on the groove, which I definitely have no problem with. Like, Banished by Celestial Harmonies, I really like the solid grooves in there. I think the riffs stand out because it's not always like a double bass pattern or a blast or even like a fast gallop on there. It's just a straightforward, you know, kind of 4-4 time rhythm. And the riffs on there are absolutely killer. Like, just flat out hook here in hell. Honestly, it was one of my favorite songs on here. But probably the biggest standout for me was the last track, The Path to the Temple of Ash, because they get a little bit proggy in here. Like, this is where they kind of move from, like, early death to later death. Like, you know, uh, pretty much, like, human and onward. You have some decidedly more proggy melodies. The transitions are a little bit more, you know, odd, I guess you could mm -hmm. say. But they kind of work with the song because it's a little bit all over the place. Plus, it's the longest track on there, so there's room to sort of navigate around there. And this is where they squeeze in a ton of solos. And, again, the guitarist is kind of going all over the place, but... Again, matching up melodies really well, while at the same time giving you all the shreddy dive bombs and just, you know, Trey-ish insanity that, well, Trey usually delivers. And they revisit a lot of riffs in this song. Like, there's probably three main riffs that they keep coming back to all the time, and that's really cool because one of the issues I had with this record is, is it's riff salad. It's all over the place. It's very transition happy, much like Tech Death is. Yeah. Uh, except sometimes it doesn't even hold on to what it transitions to long enough for it to make any sense. They tend to like add like additional parts to a main riff rather than kind of taking this main riff and rocking it out. There's maybe like an off time little turnover with a weird tag on it and it can occasionally derail the songs especially if you're kind of getting set in a groove and the weird thing is like this is still straight up old school death metal like this screams 90s death metal across the board but it's kind of written with like tech death transitions where mm -hmm. tech death is constantly known for just flying by from bit to bit this kind of does that but it's not kind of the right vibe for this style because old school death metal they lay on riffs they stick to it they add to them rather than transitioning too often it's weird because it doesn't when it does transition so much it doesn't transition to something noodly it transitions to another sick riff but it doesn't hold on to that sick riff long enough. So it's techy in the sense that it jumps around a lot, but it's non techy in the sense that it just dives into another riff. Yeah. It's weird. And, you know, it isn't as though, like, the drum style is, like, more of a tech death drum style. It's still very much, like, kind of rooted in, you know, straightforward old school death metal. Yep. It's, like, the next groovy pattern, a blast beat, you know, that sort of thing. Like, it's not, like, trying to do, like, all sorts of crazy accents, but it does do that occasionally in transitions and. You know, with old school death metal, again, like, I think you want things to be smooth. You want to kind of carry the momentum, carry the energy through, and just make people's fucking heads explode with your fucking riffs. And normally that would happen with breakdowns, but this album is oddly voided of breakdowns. There's one breakdown in The Path to the Temple of Black Ash and another one in Oracle of Death. But those are the only two times that they appear. And the odd thing is, is with riffs this heavy, because... Morbid Angel, obviously. With riffs this heavy, you'd think that they would want to lay on a breakdown towards the end of the song. But oddly, most of these songs kind of end abruptly after a lead. Yeah, uh, it's it's odd. I mean, some of them have like interesting outros, like Oracle of Death. All of a sudden, the phaser effects kind of come in, and it does this weird little fade out. But a lot of the songs, I kind of feel like they end a little abruptly. But that really wasn't like a super huge issue no. because I mean, you know, you're still getting a ton of riffs. One of my main issues on here were the interludes, and I know I generally we bitch about interludes and intros, but sometimes when they're done well and they transition 
well into the next song, mm-hmm. I don't generally have a problem with them. Now, I probably won't listen to them again. You know, right. I probably won't keep them on my phone or anything. But if it's done well and it keeps the flow of the album, that's fine. The uh, interludes on here, uh, Tenebra, Corona, Monday, and Fear from Beyond, are, are both kind of odd. Honestly, Tenebra, Corona, Monday, I, I don't, I don't get the song. I, I, I don't get it. It's got these weird chimey synths, and then underneath it a piano, and then you know a guitar lead. And on their own, isolated, I think they'd be fine. But blended together, I don't think a lot of it matches up. Like the melodies don't match. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. And and I understand if what you're trying to do is be a little bit extra dark and like horror ish in the sense where maybe all the melodies and the harmonies don't line up. But in this case, they clash with one another. And that's kind of odd. And then the second one, uh, Fear From Beyond, is long. Two minutes and 31 seconds for a synthy interlude. It, it reminds me of Hate Work from Over the Angel. I actually. always skip that song. I do too, but that's what it is. But yeah, for two and a half minutes to just do the same thing. And much like Nick said too, with interludes, they're cool if they go somewhere, if they lead to something, if there's a purpose for them. But in this case, I didn't see a purpose for either of these two. Yeah, there were kind of just two filler tracks. I mean, luckily this album doesn't suffer from bloat. Like, it runs, you know, 38 minutes, which is a pretty tight run time. But these two were odd. Uh, Fear From Beyond, I feel like it really wants to be sinister. Like, there's even, like, a creepy spoken word Mm -hmm. at the end. And I guess that kind of fits in with the more spoken word-ish style on The Path of the Temple of Black Ash. But not enough. It kind of feels a little too whimsical at times. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. like yeah, it's an evil score, but it's written by the same symphony that did, like, the Monty Python scores. <laughs> the evil score, but it's written by the, the Woodland Christmas Critters from South yeah. Park. <laughs> like, you know, not not quite, like, sinister and evil, like, you know, a Fulci movie, more like Danny Elfman. True. Start telling your kids that if they don't fucking eat their dinner, that Danny Elfman will come and take them in their sleep. Yeah, right through the closet, and then they'll go into his realm of weirdness, and they'll come back with chest tattoos. We love you, Danny Elfman. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Good job, you. But seriously, dude, you're kind of scary. But overall, I mean, honestly, I dug this. I like riffy albums. I like Morbid Angel. I like old school death metal. And even with, like, the, you know, extra stuff on here that I wasn't necessarily into, like, namely the interludes... Musically, like, it has issues, but I don't have, like, a tremendous problem with it. It's still an enjoyable listen, so I'm going to give it three and a half stars. This is some solid Morbid Angel worshipping death metal, and they do the sound well. I do think it is a little bit transition happy, and honestly, if I hadn't listened to some of their earlier albums that I really enjoyed, I might have a slightly different take on this, but... Blackest Horizon, I thought, was absolutely fantastic, and it wasn't as transition-happy as this album, but this is still really solid. Again, if you like Morbid Angel, like Florida Death Metal in general, there's a lot of death on here, Monstrosity, Deicide, name a fucking Florida Death Metal act, there's Sound probably going to be some similarities. <laughs> but Imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, and they do that sound really fucking well, so yeah, good stuff. I gotta agree with Nick, at least on the rating, three and a half stars for me, too. It's grossly entertaining in the sense that it is fiercely Morbid Angel. And if you haven't guessed by now, (laughs) we like Morbid Angel. You probably like Morbid Angel. My girlfriend likes Morbid Angel. Everyone wins. The songs, while they may be a little transition happy and uh, riff salad, they're not bad riffs by any means. I don't want to. I don't want to say that anything's bad here. No, I didn't I, hear a bad riff. No, I didn't either. And the lead work is spectacular. It is very trayish, but it is indeed spectacular. Yeah. Aside from the couple of interludes that don't make any sense, I really don't have any issue with the record. The production's pretty nice. The guitars are big and beefy. The drums are a tad compressed, but who cares? The vocals are on point for what this music is. Just full of nasty, evil riffs and tremolos and dark and sinister and vile. That's what I like about death metal. It is fiercely old school, and I like old school death metal. Uh, Yeah, again, if you're a fan of things like Skeletal Remains or Morbid Angel or Monstrosity or Death or Cannibal Corpse or really anything from Florida, much like Nick said, you're definitely going to like this record. I enjoyed it. Check it out for yourself. So, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all all the time. time. 
We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmiddle.com. Our Patreon link is there as well as our store. We will be loading up on stuff. It's just going to take a little bit of time. You know, uh, we have some interesting designs possibly coming out for t-shirts. Yes. And uh, I don't know what else. I don't know. We'll, we'll find yeah, out something. I don't know something. what else is going on. Yeah, there, uh, there's more merch coming. There's more content for sure. We got content for days. Banana hammocks. I think we got to go with that. Uh, Shred will model. Thrall for balls. <laughs> balls out, thralls out. Oh, there it is. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> to all those that see shredding a banana hammock, I'm sorry. I'm sure he is going to love it. Oh, he's it's not going to be He is never going to feel more free. Oh, my <laughs> oh, God. Lordy. Believe me, I want to be there when the cops pick him up. <laughs> and, of course, thank you all so much for liking, subscribing, following, all that shit. It means the world to us. It's amazing seeing this channel grow. Big hugs. It's uh, it's still wild. It still fucking blows my mind. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of stuff that we want to get out because, I mean, there's tons of stuff to talk about. We have some old segments coming back, probably some new segments along the way. There might even be a new addition to Thralls of Metal coming really soon. Mystery by, Thrall. And by might even, I'm going to just state that there is another member of Thralls of Metal, which you will meet very soon. We are excited to have them. They live in the shadows. Yes. Dark. But yeah, plenty of stuff coming, so once again, thank you all so much, and we will catch you later.